Hey everyone, just want to say thanks for coming back to Tim's Turbo's Information Center. What I wanted to do is go over wastegate setup, actuator control, and some electronic solenoid controls. So I'm going to make this a two-part video because they seem to be getting a little too long. So I want to talk about actuators that are controlled by vacuum, ones that are controlled by boost, dual port actuators, wastegate setups, what they do to your rotor speed, and then we're going to go over the solenoid that you're going to see on most cars today. So first off, I'm going to start out with the solenoids. So I'll move some of this over. On a typical 2.0 Audi, this is basically the setup everybody's running these days. You're going to get a boost reference point from the compressor. Now this is the inlet side, so this is what's going to be actually hooked up to the air filter over here. This is the boost pressure outlet. And this signal line is going to give it to the actuator. So it's going to be its reference port. Now when the boost pressure comes up into here, it's going to fill this solenoid. And this valve is usually set in a closed position. So it's not bleeding off the boost pressure into the tube. What it's doing is it's going into an L shape, connecting over your actuator. This is your actuator that's connected to the wastegate. And so from here to there, you're going to have your signal line. So whatever spring pressure that your actuator is set at is going to be the lowest boost pressure this vehicle can do. So I'll make the math simple. If this is a 10 pound spring in here, and your compressor is putting out 10 pounds of boost, it's going to open up that actuator and give it its lowest level of boost possible. The only way that it's going to raise the boost pressure by holding the rod in here longer is when the computer gives a false signal to the actuator. What that does, it actually bleeds off the extra pressure. So it could have 20 pounds of boost in there and it'll still only show that it's only about 8 or 9, 10 pounds of boost here. So it'll hold the boost pressure and the wastegate closed, bringing up your rotor speed. So once the rotor speed is picked up, the actuator opens, closes, goes back and forth, cycles many, many times over. And so if you have a default position with a low boost code, if this piece is broken, then no matter what you do, you're pretty much only going to get the lowest level of boost because you're actually getting a full signal of boost to the actuator. I know it sounds a little confusing, but that's kind of the way it works. So now that I kind of explained a little bit on the electronics, I'll go over in part two what the actuator comparison to the wastegate and rotor speed does. I'll see you in a minute.